let's take a look at Python Tutor. And to get to this, there's a link from Canvas, or you can simply go to Google, and if you type in Python Tutor, uh, it will come up. And sometimes you know, if there's an ad, whatever, but you're looking for pythontutor.com. Okay, so type that in and get there any way you'd like. All right, so we're gonna come here, these two links, this one, this Python Tutor link, and also this down here, start visualizing your code now, you can click on either one of those. Uh, if you end up taking Java or C++ from me, we use it at the beginning of those courses too, so by then you'll be familiar with it, and you'll realize how awesome this is. So I'm just gonna click on this, it will take us right to this uh, little window here. We've got uh, our, our piece where we're gonna write code, so line number one, uh, as we roll down here, we, you know, obviously that would you know, keep going down each time gives us a line number. We are going to be using Python 3.6 every single time. So when you click on that, never to, never with Anaconda. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and, and leave this at 3.6. Now, the reason why this is so amazing, let me uh, let me talk about that just for a second. So uh, just really quickly, we have to say thank you to Philip Guo. Uh, he is, well, now he's a uh, cognitive science professor at CSU San Diego. So if you end up at San Diego, definitely someone you want to look up. Uh, but he developed this throughout his education. But when he was at MIT, he went on to do his doctorate at Stanford, then back to the computer science and artificial intelligence labs at MIT. He developed this to help new programmers learn how to code. And I can't understate how amazing this is. Um, I'm an old guy in coding, so I turned 50 this year, uh, and we didn't have tools like this. So uh, yes, I walked, you know, to school in the snow, barefoot, uphill, and all that kind of good stuff. But these uh, tools like this that Philip uh, have created, I, I really think this is the best tool ever created for for coding. Okay, so uh, it enables you to see what's going on uh, and what the computer is seeing line by line. Uh, so let me give you an example, and you'll see more of this as we use this. Uh, throughout the uh, first coding chapter. But let me just go ahead. I just pasted a little bit of code in here, so not really that big a deal. But uh, but anyway, so we have this little piece here. We just have a little comment just saying, hey, this is the, the uh, you know a little demo I'm doing. And then I have two variable names, first num, second num. I mean, I don't know, great. But uh, uh, one of them, you can see the value is 50, setting it to 50, and one of them, we're setting the value at 100. Then we have another... Uh, variable name called total where we're just simply adding those up and then we're displaying this now these are things we're going to be doing in this chapter so you'll see all this kind of stuff later and I'll, I'll spend more time talking about it giving you examples and all that stuff for now I just want you to see how it works so here's what you're going to do when you have your code done you're going to click on visualize execution when you do that now you have two little setups here so see the line down the screen and you can adjust this if you'd like to so um, so you've got that piece in there and you notice how we have steps so step one of four so we're gonna have four steps according to the computer and you can see the next line to execute is the red line so it completely ignores the uh, the comment okay so we don't the compiler doesn't care about it at all and then doesn't care about this white space on line two uh, so the first thing it's going to do is come down to line three and it's going to execute now here's the beauty of it here's our console out or our output window over here okay and then we have this section over here that is essentially what the computer is seeing so when i click next you'll see it's going to execute line three and what it's going to do is it's going to this, this information will make sense later. You'll see, you know, we've got this global variable. Uh, some of you may say, where's main? Well, we'll deal with that later. Don't worry about it right now. We're keeping it simple. Uh, but here's our variable name. And you can see the value that it's storing for it is 50. Okay. So just executed that line. Now it's going to execute this line. So when I hit next, again, line four has now executed. Boom. We have this being stored here. On line six, total equals first num plus second num. Look at that. Boom, adds it up for us, stores it there. You notice the user hasn't seen anything yet. So there's no output at all. So this, imagine this is your monitor, right? So this is our output window. And we've seen nothing. The only thing the user is going to see is from line 8, where when I click next, it's going to simply say the total is 150. It prints the value for total that's stored here. Okay, so this is a very, very, very useful tool. Again, I know I already said it, but the single greatest thing ever created for newbies that are learning how to code uh, so you get to step through all this and it gets very very complicated so you can uh, you can do all sorts of different things in fact I think the demo 
Uh, let me go over back over this page right here. Let's see what this. Is. Oh yeah, yeah, this is a good one. So, uh, so Philip has this on here, which you're not gonna understand this, but um, like kind of. I mean, it's you know, it's a high-level programming language, so it's not not too bad. But anyway, we're not gonna deal with tuples and lists for a while. But you can see where it it has all this detailed information, and it even throws in arrows, so you can see, you know, like oh, that's where that's going, and and all that kind of stuff. So this is a very, very, very useful uh, program for you and uh or site for you to use and this particular tool you're going to love it um it enables you to see things where uh you know if you were running this and you'll see we're going to use another one later on uh the, the you'll see later but uh in a chapter or two we'll, we'll use an, another online one uh but but this lets you do different things like say for example i mean just i don't know what can i do here Oh, let's say I was doing something different. Let's say I was like, hey, I was typing in this code, and I'm like, no, wait, first num needs to be something else. So maybe i change it down here, right? So if I say, hey, I want first num to be 25, and I think, oh, that everything's great, right? So I go to, to uh, execute this. If you just hit last, it's like it just goes, right? Um, and I think the total should be 125 because I changed the number, but total is decided right here. So this variable changed after. So if I'm like, oh, wait a second, what happened here? So these are just little things like as you're coding, uh, you know, the output may not be exactly what you what you would like. Uh, this will help you find those errors. So, oh, yeah, if I wanted to change this and, and make it be in the output, I'd have to change it up here before this is calculated. Right. Um, you know, obviously I'd change right here. But but anyway, so just little things like that. So it just helps you find errors, see what the computer is thinking, um, see what's going on kind of behind the scenes back over here. Uh, especially when we get to some of our advanced concepts or maybe we're doing when we're doing loops and things are running through and we're like, man, what is the value as it's going through here and all that kind of good stuff. So you will love this. OK, one last thing uh, before we go, I need to show you how to turn in your assignments. So this is what you're going to do and you're going to do this for all of your assignments. When we use the other side, I'll show you how to do the links in there in a separate video. But uh, what I want you to do is say you've got your code and you're like, OK, it's all good to go. Visualize. You've walked through it. When you get to the end and it says done, okay, and you know the output's right, uh, what you're going to do, roll down the screen a little bit, and you're going to use this button right here. So generate permanent link. Click that, and it puts a massive link in here. So you'll see it just goes and goes and goes and goes, goes, like goes forever, right? So click in the box, hold down control on your keyboard, and hit A. So it does select all, okay? Um, that's... I've that's the easiest way. I guess you could use, you know, right click and hit it there too. And then I usually just right click and hit copy. You can use, if you want to use a keyboard, you can hit hold down control and hit C, right? So any way you'd like to do that. And then now you have that link stored. You can go paste it into Canvas. And it doesn't matter how long it is. It makes no difference at all. Canvas just stores it as a simple link. I click on it, go to it, run through your code because I run through all of your code when you turn it in. Okay. So when I go through and you're doing my grading. Okay, so I see all of your programs, run them live, make sure that everything's working okay, check stuff out, all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so anyway, so when you're make sure it's when you're done running everything. I want to see exactly what you see at the end. Okay, so um, and then go down, generate permanent link, select all, copy. Okay, so that's quick introduction into Python Tutor. And it'll make more sense to you uh, once you, you know, get the code down and all that kind of good stuff. And we're going to do that throughout this chapter. Uh, but you will absolutely love this. Okay, so pythontutor.com. Amazing.